What's up everybody? Welcome to Top 10 Character Moments. Today we're breaking down my list for the top 10 best moments of the Spider-Woman known as Gwen Stacy. Be sure to tune in every Friday to watch my latest top 10 video. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And also, go over to my other YouTube channel called Sector for Nerds, link in the description below, and subscribe there as well. Thank you guys so much. All right, you guys, let's get into a few honorable mentions before cracking the top 10, shall we? First up, stopping a helicopter from crashing into civilians. Saving people is what part of being a hero is all about. She took the charge and began webbing up a helicopter before it hit the ground. Gwen also had the sickest theme in this whole movie and played it several times at the beginning, including this moment. And for our other honorable mention, saving Miles from falling. This comes after she kind of betrayed Miles, but this was her way of saying without saying it, hey, it's okay, I still got you, I still care about you. But Miles was like, nah, screw it, you stabbed me in the back. If y'all watched my Miles Morales video a couple weeks back, you know how much I ship these two. But I tell you what, Gwen's gonna have to redeem herself first, which I believe she will. We'll get to that later. All right, you guys, let's get into the top 10 list itself. You guys ready? Here we go. At number 10, taking on Vulture, this was a fun opening battle scene for Gwen. She did a lot of joking around, and once again, that theme, ugh, I love it. At number nine, meeting the parents of Miles. Ah, the girlfriend meeting the boyfriend's parents. Real awkward this was. I don't know why I just talked like Yoda there for a second, but let's just move past it. The moment when Miles' dad, or should I say Captain Morales, introduced himself, and she just salutes him and says, Captain, I was like, oh, this can't get much worse. And then it did. When his mom is like, don't take him from me. Miles, I feel so bad for you right now, dude. She also says not to break his heart. Oh, woman, you have no idea. But the main reason I love this scene so much is when she gets a call on her wrist com, she acts it like it's a Fitbit and goes, I forgot to get my steps in and does one of the funniest little dances I've ever seen. I laugh at it every time. At number eight, chatting with Miles' parents about Miles. Speaking of awkward moments, this definitely started out as one. Gwen just shows up at their house and enters through Miles' window, and there's no Miles. So yeah, I'm kind of with the parents on this one. But this moment here is where Gwen starts her redemption arc. And usually when someone says redemption, it usually means they've done something really bad and they have to make up for it. I know this whole situation with Miles isn't Gwen's fault. That being said, she did go along with it. And I know she got her own crap going on with her father and, make, and people make mistakes. I get it. But now she's got to be there for her friend because that friend feels massively betrayed by everyone. And the one that hurt the most was Gwen because he cared about her the most. And I think Gwen understands that, which is why she tells his parents she's going to find him, which his mom tells her, if you do, tell him five months and that we love him. And so it begins. At number seven, meeting Miles Morales. Back when we thought this was just a random girl Miles was in class with, he made a joke that made her chuckle and she complimented him when he sat down. And from there, a friendship started to blossom. And then the shoulder touch kind of put that on hold, but that's aside from the point. At number six, defeating Doc Ock slash saving Miles and Peter. This was cool because it's the first time we see Gwen's abilities as Spider-Woman on display. And thank goodness she was there, otherwise the boys would have been goners for good. At number five, revealing her identity to her father. This was definitely one of the hardest, if not the hardest thing Gwen has ever had to do. Her webs weren't working and her father had a gun pointed at her. She had no choice. Instead of being a father, he chose to be a cop in that moment. And had it not been for Miguel, she probably would have been arrested. Man, I felt so bad for Gwen here. It's like this is the only family she has left and he's pushing her away. The first 20-30 minutes of Across the Spider-Verse were dedicated to Gwen and her story. And this moment was the culmination of that story. At number 4, reuniting with Gwen. Like I said in my Miles video, this was so wholesome. Though kind of awkward at some points. Like when Gwen says, look at you, you grew, have a little growth spurt. All the regret in the world right there. Also, Gwen, why did you rip that action figure out of the package? You still haven't told me why. But the part I love most is when they're sitting on that building just chatting with each other. They both understand each other so well. Ugh, I ship these too hard. This is like one of my favorite ships ever, which is why it makes it so much more heartbreaking that she went against him. In every universe, Gwen Stacy falls for Spider-Man. And in every universe, it doesn't work out. But like the battle against Thanos, if there's 14,605,000 outcomes and only one where we win, I want these two to be the one that actually works. I'm begging for it. 
At number three, we're supposed to be the good guys. A line Gwen says to Miguel after he forces her to go home. And a line that really resonated with me because this spider society isn't all I thought it would be. I thought it would be about heroes coming together to help protect the universe, but instead they're listening to algorithms. Though that being said, I'm curious what happens if Miles does break his canon events. I want him to try and protect his family, but Miguel looked at Gwen and said, you wanna find out? Oh no, does Gwen die? Does Miles die? Does everyone die Doctor Strange episode of What If style? What happens? Sony, y'all better be working on this third movie. I need it. At number two, having a heart-to-heart -heart chat with her father. After getting sent back home, Gwen reunites with her dad and just lets it all out. She explains how her mask is her badge and how she tries to be good, but she doesn't know what the right thing is anymore. Luckily for Gwen, her dad quit the force, which means he won't be captain, which should also theoretically mean he won't die. So that's a plus. And also means the father's choosing his daughter over his job. Double plus. And he gave her the wristband that Javi left for her. Triple plus. And finally at number one, for now, starting her own band. I like this because Gwen really is trying to make things right with Miles, but she can't do it alone. She needs a band, a team, a spider squad. She assembles a group of people we meet in this movie and people we've met in the first movie, which was fantastic because I loved Spider-Ham and Spider-Noir in the first Spider-Verse movie. So seeing them again here and knowing they're going to have a role in this third movie is amazing. Now to make it clear, I think the best Gwen Stacy moment is yet to come. The final movie in this trilogy will hopefully do wonders for Gwen. The last movie she betrayed the trust of Miles and betrayed her friendship. And this coming movie, she will hopefully earn that trust and her friendship back. Because at her core, she's an amazing person. She just got caught up with the wrong people. And that's why she assembled this group. Because it's full of people that are going to help Miles and do the right thing. Hopefully. But will Miles want their help? That's the other thing we gotta consider. It would be smart for him to take it, but his head may be in a different spot after being betrayed by them. Before I end this video, Sony and everyone working on this trilogy, I have one small request. Please don't screw this up. Just please don't. I haven't felt this much hype for a movie since Avengers Endgame. There's something truly special about this universe and about these characters, so don't ruin it. So there you have it guys, that's my list for the top 10 best Gwen Stacy moments. Next week, I'll be breaking down my picks for the top 10 best moments of Avatar Korra. Thank you all for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week.